Chinatown has been an important landmark on uh, San Francisco for a long time. It has been a popular tourist attraction and a place for locals to visit. The Chinese diaspora, or millions of Chinese immigrated to major U.S. cities, sparked many Chinatowns to appear, including the one in San Francisco. Chinese came initially seeking work and looking to capitalize on the gold rush and economic boom of San Francisco. Life for these workers was hard. They were paid far less and forced to take labor-intensive jobs that demanded long shifts. The state of California passed several acts and laws that tried to prevent Chinese immigration and prevent them from assimilating into society. Eventually, the Chinese became more accepted after the Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965 that loosened restrictions on immigration. Since then, Chinatown has been a staple of San Francisco, thriving with restaurants, bars, nightclubs, and stores selling items of Chinese culture. Due to this, Chinatown SF has been regarded as the largest Chinese enclave outside of Asia. Chinatown has been a major landmark and popular tourist attraction for locals to visit for a long time due to the Chinese diaspora, or immigration wave that has been in place since the 19th century. We are going to focus on one of the more prominent Chinatowns, which is the San Francisco Enclave. This Chinatown has been a very unique backstory, as it was originally a boomtown, started by Chinese who came for gold during the gold rush. Life for these workers has always been hard because they were paid less and the people of other ethnic backgrounds, even with the same amount of intensive work hours put in. In addition to low paying jobs, they also have a hard time communicating with tourists and non-native speakers. In comparison to the rest of SF, Chinatown is fairly big itself with around 20 blocks and a population of 34,557 people. In each block, there is an average of 1.7K people, meaning that Chinatown is overpopulated. California especially passed several laws that tried to limit Chinese immigration, especially with a series of restrictive acts ending with eventually the Naturalization Act of 1965 or the Hard Seller Act. This act was explicitly aimed towards immigrants from East Asia along with South Europe and East Europe. Now you must be wondering how Chinatowns compare to sun- surrounding neighborhoods and what people are. In comparison to other neighborhoods in San Francisco, Chinatown has 34,500 residents in 20 blocks or about 1,725 people per block, which is historically seven times greater than the rest of San Francisco. The annual median income per household is about $20,000 compared to $76,000 for the whole of San Francisco, including Chinatown, meaning that 29% of the people are below the poverty threshold. We saw many stores like the one shown on screen that sold dried food products. Prices of these goods range from $140 to $300 per pound, and they are used for Chinese traditional cuisine. In addition to markets, there are many restaurants and bakeries in Chinatown. One we stopped by was the Golden Gate Bakery, which is a sweet shop that has very long lines for its goods. It is famous for its delicious egg custard tarts, but they offer, but they also offer lotus seed paste cakes, moon cakes, flavored napoleons, and chocolate chip cookies. Moreover, some of the savory options they offer are the barbecue pork roll and chicken pie. The instrument just played by the man is a zhongrun, a traditional Chinese pluck string instrument. The zhongrun has 24 frets on the fingerboard and 4 strings. It has a calm, rich tone and is usually played as a lead instrument in small ensemble. This market sells both traditional Chinese foods and normal produce. They sold a variety of fruits, vegetables, drinks, spices, and sauces. A sauce they sold was oyster sauce, which is a viscous dark brown condiment made from oyster extracts, sugar, salt, and water thickened with cornstarch. It is used in Cantonese cuisine. A spice they sold was Wujiang powder, which is a combination of five or more spices that is used in almost every branch of Chinese cuisine. Similar to many other urban areas, Chinatown has many annual festivals that have interesting origins. In the 1950s during the Korean War, a number of Chinese American leaders led by W.K. Wong organized the San Francisco Chinese New Year Festival and Parade. 
including art shows, street dances, martial arts, music, and fashion shows. The 1953 parade was led by Korean War veteran Joe Wong and featured the Miss Chinatown Festival Queen and the Dragon. A traditional Chinese event celebrated in Chinatown is the annual Autumn Moon Festival, which celebrates seasonal changes and the opp opportunity to give thanks to a bountiful summer harvest. The Moon Festival is popularly celebrated throughout China and surrounding countries each year, with local bazaars, entertainment, and mooncakes, a pastry filled with sweet bean paste and egg. The festival is held each year during mid-September. And now here is an interview that sheds some light on how people act in the San Francisco enclave. So, um, how long have you been working or living in Chinatown? Me? Yeah. Almost 10 years, something. Oh. Yeah. And what products does your store sell? Me? You say hats, scarves, look like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, why do you think people um, gather together to form like these Chinatowns and these racial gatherings? Can you say again? Why do you think uh, people uh, live together uh, of the same race live together? Like, why do all a bunch of Chinese people live together? Why do you think this happens? Oh, uh, yeah, more than people, Chinese people live there in China. Uh, why do you think that happens? Uh, I don't know. Usually, maybe because of this Chinatown, right? Okay. Prior to this interview, over a dozen shop owners either ignored us or declined our request for an interview. In hindsight, it was quite evident that most of the shops that weren't tourist shops couldn't understand us. However, many of the shops did not understand us but neglected our request because they were trying to do business. We passed by a dim sum restaurant here. Dim sum, meaning heart's delight in Mandarin, is a style of Chinese food that is served in small portions. The food is served in small steaming baskets or on hot plates. Dim sum is often served along with tea and the food is brought around on food carts while the waiter will drop off the food directly at the table. There are a few other places like this in Chinatown, this just being one of them. On many of the crowded streets in Chinatown, one can spot the bright red Chinese paper lanterns that are strung over the street. These lanterns have been associated with Asian culture, especially China. These lanterns are made from thin red paper and usually decorated with gold characters. Chinatown is a place that any tourist or local can enjoy and there are many sites to visit within it. Despite the discrimination they may have faced, Chinatowns like the one in San Francisco continue to exist throughout many major urban US cities. The restaurants, shops that sell unique Chinese items, and the overall atmosphere make the San Francisco Chinatown a landmark of California. I would also like to give credit to the resources we used to make this film. The websites we used are SanFranciscoChinatown.com, SFTravel.com, TripAdvisor.com, TimeOut.com, PBS.org, ChinatownCDC.org, and SFGate.com.